welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? And I can tell already, I've, I've read my guest's uh, book or one of her books already, and, and I loved it. But just chatting with her now, you're going to love her, not just her writing, but her too. So let me just remind you, I'm Karen E. Osborne. I'm your host. I'm author of Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, and the upcoming book, Reckonings, which comes out this June. And my guest today is Carolyn Gerald. And you're, oh, you're just gonna love her. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, thank you for inviting me. I'm so excited. I am too. Um, it's lots of times I don't read my guest books until after, because my to read pile is so high, but I had the pleasure of reading yours beforehand. So this is just really, um, really terrific. Uh, so like me, you got published later in life. Your first book came out later in life. Can you tell us a little bit about your writing journey? Sure. Well, the short version is that um, I wrote through my 20s, not fiction. I wrote on the arts. I uh, worked for um, the Louisville Courier Journal, um, which is a newspaper from Louisville, wrote book reviews for them. I wrote on the arts, lots of reviews. And that's what I did while my children were napping. And um, after they uh, grew too old for naps, I realized that you know, my writing was really not getting me where I wanted it to be. So I went back to school and got my MSW and had a long career, which is nearly over. Um, I'm nearly retired as a therapist, and, which was a wonderful, wonderful trade for me. Um, after my husband died, it was suggested that I journal to, uh, to have an outlet for my feelings. Instead, I started writing short stories. And I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and um, published over 30 of them. Wow. And I, yeah, I know. I didn't realize that was unusual, but I guess it is. Um, then I decided to take uh, a number of them and to kind of rewrite them a bit and turn them into a book um, on the consequences of crime. All my books, all my novels, all my short stories, my work as a therapist was all about the consequences of crime. I mainly, uh, most of my clients were victims of uh, domestic violence, child abuse, uh, and other crimes. And that's what my, my books are about. So the first one, um, and all the crimes uh, happen in the first chapter. That, that I don't write mysteries in that sense. Tell us the name. The, the, first tell us the, name. Wrote, the first one I wrote, which was published in 2020, is called Take Me Out the Back. As in, take me out the back and shoot me something people say. Well, somebody did. In the first chapter, there's a mass murder and um, all the other chapters are about the consequences of that murder. So um, you asked me something and I'm babbling here. You asked me for the kind of journey. journey. You're doing a great yes. job. Yes. So <laughs> you wrote the first one, Take Me Out the Back. Yes. And that came out in 2020. Yes. And then you wrote a second book. Um, who shall who shall live? Who shall live? And that just came out this past October. The crime in this book is the abduction of a child from a Jewish community in a small Indiana town. And by the way, I live in a small Indiana town, but that the name of the town is not mentioned in the book. But the, this this book explores this crime as it goes through three generations and repeats itself. So this child is abducted in the first chapter. She's taken to a mystical forest where she um, becomes the leader of a group of people escaping the pandemic and living off the grid. But then she abducts the child and that child grows up to abduct the child herself. So this crime and the consequences of it yeah. go through three different, 
um, generations with lots of twists and turns. Yes, you know, the other thing that I thought was so unusual and good about, uh, about this one, um, Who Shall Die, uh, Who Shall Live, right? Who Shall Live, uh, was that it takes place in the past, the present and the future. That's right. Which three is, generations. Which is really interesting, you know, because usually when you hear about three generations, it's present day back, you know, the generations back. Right. But you took this unusual approach mm -hmm. of past, present, and future. I did. Which, which was very, very cool. And uh, and then you have another book coming out this year, right? Two, actually. Well, um, tell us about the one that's coming out in June. Okay, that's called The Struggle. For this one, my challenge to myself was to write about the consequence of a crime in, in one individual's life. So the individual is a 12-year-old boy, and he commits arson in the first chapter. He burns um, his house down, and in the process kills his mother and his best friend. And um, it takes him through, the novel takes him through high school, and college, he's burned himself, so he has a kind of monstrous appearance. High school, he tries to get in with the popular group. This is a subject I know well, having, having never been in a popular group, <laughs> having always wanted to be. So, um, but then um, his fate continues in his college years when he joins a cult, um, a kind of popular group in that sense. He has to make up his mind in the course of the novel whether to betray the cult or not. And that's the moral dilemma. I um, was interested in his moral growth from this 12 year old boy who sort of accidentally on purpose burns down his house mm -hmm. to the man he becomes by the time he's 25. Wow. And wow. so that's that book. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is amazing. Um, so we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you in a little bit about the one that's in progress and coming out okay. at the end of the year. But before we go there, um, so you have all of this background, the psychological background, which helps feed these wonderful uh, plots and these wonderful characters. What kind of reader were you during those those years of writing those short stories and, um, you know? What, what kind of books fed you? Well, let me first by starting with a confession. Um, I don't usually read while I'm writing. Mm -hmm. That's out of fear. I'm scared that I'll lose my voice and just pick up the author's voice. Although I did read one recently in manuscript. It was called Reckonings by this woman, Karen Osborne. And I, <laughs> I did enjoy that one. But um, most of my reading and most of the books I'm drawn to are literary slash psychological novels written by women, mostly women who got their start in the 20th century. That's my century as a senior. Um, would you like me to name the 10 names? I wrote down 10 names. 10 names of, of 10 books? Of, nope, 10 authors. 10 authors, give me three. <laughs> give you three. Well. Five of the 10 have names um, beginning with Anne. <laughs> okay. Anne Taylor, Anne, um, Anne Bruckner, and Annie Prolix. How All right, so that? tell us what you like about them. I like family dramas. I like strong women characters. Mm -hmm. um, I like psychological insight. And I think the writers that I'm drawn to give me that. And yeah. of course, that's the kind of writer I aspire to be too. Yeah, yeah, you, you and I are very similar in many ways. I, I love strong women, uh, all of my books, but, but flawed, troubled, yeah. <laughs> but, but, str <laughs> but It's strong. not interesting otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It would be very boring if they were just all perfect, uh, perfect women. So you, First of all, I'm just awed at your how prolific you are, you know, because so how long does it take you to write? How long has it taken you to write a complete? I know it takes time to edit and all that, but to write yeah. a complete novel, how long does it take you? Um, 
it's months. It's it's uh, less than a year, I would say, maybe eight months. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and all this is a surprise to me, too. No one is more surprised than I am. <laughs> <laughs> And what, and what is your, like, do you say, I'm going to write so many words a day or so many chapters a week, or do, it just flows? What's, what's your you No, know, what I do is I go to sleep. I either sleep through the night or I take a nap and I wake up and somehow or another, I know what I'm going to write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I think I'm a conduit. I don't, I, I keep saying, this is not coming from me. It's coming from somewhere. <laughs> can't be from me. Do you write it? I don't plan. I don't plan. Don't I don't plan. know how my, I don't know. I never know how my novels are going to end. I never know how the chapters are going to end. Mm. I just let them flow. And do you write every day? I try to. Mm. It, and you know, I don't know that I get there every day, but I get there a lot. Yeah, that's, that is amazing. That's wonderful. And so tell us about your work in progress that's coming out in December. December, yeah, December. It's a sequel to Who Shall Live called Who Shall Die. And um, the sequel is um, in a genre that I seldom read. It's a dystopian novel. It takes place in 2040 when the pandemic of 2035, not 19 anymore, not COVID-35, has hit the, uh, the world. And society is organized no longer by race, class, money. It's organized by health status. It's I the only thing that matters. Mm. Yeah. So um, there are the active cases. Those people are you know, hospitalized. There are the recovereds. They are the people who do most of the work. There are the spreaders. They're confined to an island so they don't uh, infect anyone. And there are the pures who are collected, who are the sort of top of society and who live in um, luxury in a place called the pure house, surrounded by gardens and all the things the rest don't have. So it's about that. It, it continues the story of the granddaughter of the girl who was originally abducted. Now she has a daughter mm. and um, it's her story as she makes her way through the various social health ranks wow. in 2040. So it is dystopian. How fun, but you're just, I'm just watching you. I can tell you're just having a blast writing all of these. Yeah. Well, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it, that is a good, it's a good thing. You know, you said earlier that um, you don't plan and I'm like you, I don't plan. My, my characters take me wow. all kinds of places. Uh, the only one that I had to plan was uh, my murder mystery, Tangled Lies, because, you know, I had to make sure that the, the plot supported um, the ending, right. but yeah. uh, but but other than that, all all of my books, I'm going over here, and my characters are taking me <laughs> over here, and and I listen to them, you know, because they're they're pretty insistent. <laughs> so. Well, I am surprised because um, when I read Reckonings, that's not what I imagined. I imagined that you had charts on the wall, and you were, um. <laughs> you know. No, 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 it just, it was, you know, Roxy just kept having experiences and I had to keep up with her. Well, you did. <laughs> Thank Good you. Job. Well, if our um, viewers would like to find out more about you, they'd like to be in touch, see your, first of all, to buy her books, you can find her on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and you can find her in the bookstores and you can find her in the libraries, but where can they find out about you online? Well, I'm not good about keeping up my site, so I will warn everybody, but um, www.carolyngettle.com will take you to my, uh, my website. I also have an author page on Facebook, which I can never remember how you get to, I think it's uh, Carolyn Gettled author. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds you know, right. Yeah, I think that's what you do when you go to Facebook and you put in the search, Carolyn Gettled author. Yeah. I have um, an Amazon author page. 
um, Twitter. Yeah. So I'm not everywhere, but I am here and there. Um, and please get in touch with me. Yes, I'd love please. to hear from you. <laughs> Reach out. And right now, Carolyn is on the beach writing. That's where she I is am. right now. Yes. Living, living her best life, if you ask me. <laughs> it's just been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure being with you. And thank all of you for sticking with us and coming with us. When you go and visit uh, Carolyn's website, you go and visit her author page, make sure you hit follow, you go on Amazon, hit follow, because that really helps us. That helps us a lot to know that, um, that people are following us and it helps us keep in touch with you. Thanks again, everybody, and see you next time for What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? <laughs>